Hello everyone, it's Rachel. I am an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb and I'm so excited to bring you another educational video. Today's training is gonna be all about Cricut Basics. This is gonna be one that you need if you are starting out with your machine. It doesn't matter what Cricut you have. On the table here we have an Explorer 3. You can have any Cricut and this training will definitely apply to you. We're going to be talking about how to upload images into Design Space. This can be something that can feel a little bit daunting when you're first starting out, and we're going to be sharing with you how to upload the two most common file image types. That is an SVG and a PNG. So if you are ready to go along this ride with me and learn how to upload these images, go ahead and keep watching. Before we hop on over into Design Space, I want to encourage you all, if you are in a crafting rut, if you have just begun uh, in your crafting journey, whether that be with the Cricut, the Glowforge, sewing, sublimation, woodworking, we would love to hold your hand and create confident, well-rounded crafters out of you. If you all want to join with us on this journey, click the very first link below and see how you can become a member of the Oak and Lamb Flock. Now we're over in Design Space and this is going to be a very short and sweet training. We love giving you guys these smaller videos with little tidbits on how to learn and master your machine and Design Space. Now it can be very daunting, which is why we do break these videos up into very small segments as to not overwhelm you guys. So do be on the lookout for some more amazing uh, Cricut beginner videos for you to help you in your journey. Uh, but today we're just gonna be uploading an SVG and a PNG. Now you guys might be saying, well, what is that? So an SVG is a scalable vector graphic. And that is just what the word SVG stands for. Now those are the most common, most used file types in all of cricketing and all of crafting. Uh, it's a digital cut file and it is a very common one. So usually if you'll purchase one off of Etsy or something like that, it usually comes as a SVG. So again, that is a scalable vector graphic. That's what that means. And then the other one is a PNG. That stands for portable network graphic. Now that is different in the way that those are the ones that are usually typically used for print thin cut. Um, they do not scale up very well. They do not create pixels. They just are the size that they are. So once you scale it up really high, they can become cloudy or grainy or a little bit fuzzy. Uh, whereas SVGs, which in the name SVG, scalable vector graphic, the scalable part means that it will create pixels within the image in order to be scaled up super, super high, super large, and still look nice and crisp. So we have an SVG and a PNG right here. And we're gonna be uploading both of these today. So we're on the home page here of Design Space. Now you can go to your canvas two different ways. You can click New Project right here, or you can go over and click this hamburger menu and click Canvas. Either one will get you right where you need to go. Now that we're here, we're gonna click Upload, which Upload is over here on your panel onto the left of the screen. So this is your Layers panel, and this is kind of all your little buttons that you'll use for different things. Now again, we will have more training coming up of a tour of design space showing you all of these amazing things to make sure you guys are super confident when working in here. But today we're just focusing on uploading images. So we're gonna click upload and you can see image or pattern fill. We will talk about this in an entirely different video. We're gonna be working on uploading images here. So we're gonna click upload image and we'll go ahead and upload our SVG first. It is the most simple thing to upload ever. I, for one, choose to be a desktop file girl. This is what I like to do. Sometimes you can save files in a folder and things like that. If I'm gonna be using one specific file, I like to have it over here on my desktop. I feel like it kind of cuts out the middleman, cuts out some confusion. It is what I prefer to do. So I'm gonna click it, a little SVG, and you can see it says .svg.png, so that is usually the difference between them if you do have one cut file that has both versions. So I'm gonna take this, click it, and drag it in here, and all it says is drag and drop file. So I just drug it in there, and that's it. And now you can see the preview right here. And if you would like to name it, you can name it. It named it automatically so crafty, and that's totally fine by me. 
You can add tags if you want to. And what tags will help you do is if you have a ton of images later on down the road, you can search different words and the words will pop up as tags under this. So you could do a tag of sewing, um, crafting, scissors, things like that. Uh, things that are in the image pin cushion. I mean, you know, things like that. And then those tags will be added to the cut file where you can search for them later if you don't remember the name or anything like that. So tags are super helpful as well. And now all you have to do is click upload. Now, right here, it's uploaded. We already uploaded one, so I'm just gonna delete this really quickly, and I'll share with you how to do that too. Um, but if you have one of these, you wanna delete it, you have you know, so many, all you have to do is click these little three dots here, click delete, and then at the top of the screen, it'll just be like, are you sure? Click yes. So that's how to delete files. But this is the one we just imported, and you just click on it. And once you click on it at the bottom of your screen, it will show all the ones you have selected. Now you can click on multiple, as you can see, they'll all show up here, or you can just click on one. However many you want to upload into your Canvas, you can, and once you have that one, you just click Add to Canvas. And here it is, I'm gonna size it down just a little bit, and you can see all of these layers in the layers panel. Make sure you keep an eye on those because this is gonna be another one of the big differences between an SVG and a PNG. So you can see all those layers in the layers panel. Now we're gonna click Upload once more, and I'm gonna share with you how to upload your PNG. So again, click Upload Image, and we've already uploaded our SVG, so we're gonna upload our PNG where you do the same thing, drag and drop. And now you'll go through these motions on cleaning your image up, selecting your image type, things like that. We only ever choose complex. Now, why is that? Because we don't want this to think we have a super simple cut image here. We want to make sure that our cut file is complex. It has all the colors we want, it has all the depth we want, and nothing is being compromised. So we always click complex here and click continue. And here, if your image were to have a background, were to have like a white background or something like that, you could remove that background. Now we have a select and erase thing here. You can go in here, select and erase the background. We don't have a background in ours. Usually the PNGs do not. Usually they just import like this with a clear background exactly how they're supposed to. There's nothing on the back end. There's no white border to take off, but there are uh, different things that you could select to do that. The select tool, the erase tool, things like that. Um, and then we can click apply and continue once you're done with all of that. And we want this as a print and cut image and not as a cut image. Since we did upload a PNG, it will give you both options, a print and cut or a cut image. You can see the cut image only has like the outline. Everything's one color, things like that. We're gonna keep this as a print the cut image. We want it to have all the detail and things like that. So we're gonna click print the cut image and click upload. And now you'll see it has uploaded. You can click on it, click add to canvas. And now I'm gonna share with you a little bit of a difference about uh, the SVG and the PNGs here. Now we're gonna size this down. I'll bring it over here next to this one. And you can see there are some differences to the naked eye here. The biggest being, it doesn't seem like there's as much depth. You can see there's like a black outline here in the scissors and there's not. It just looks a little bit different. Now the biggest telltale sign of it being a print and cut is how many layers the image has. If we click this image over in the layers panel, you can see so many layers. But if we click this image, there's only one layer. This is always true with a print and cut. Um, so these are the main differences. This is the print and cut. It takes a long time to just get all of this down pat, okay? A lot of people will accidentally upload PNGs or SVGs when they wanted to use the other, get confused on it. So do take your time, give yourself some grace. Practice makes perfect with this, especially knowing things like this beforehand really help you in your crafting journey a lot. So if you're watching this and you are, you have yet to even buy your Cricut or you have yet to use this feature and upload your cut files, I commend you for taking the time to search and do your research before you waste time, money, energy with a couple of, you know, craft fails or anything like that where you don't exactly know what you're doing. Um, so thank you for searching for this and for learning all about this. This is going to be 
a game changer for you all in your crafting journey when you can really get the difference between SVG and PNG down, upload them correctly and use them correctly. And I would love to share with you guys how to remove a background on an image. So I'm gonna import one of these with a white background on it. I'm gonna click complex and click continue. And this right here is where we had the clear background last time. It was transparent. It was perfect. We didn't have to do this step. But just in case you're faced with this, I want to give you this training. We'll have it more in depth in some other videos and things like that. But this is the gist of it. So you can do one of two things here. You can either click uh, to do this automatically or use the manual feature and do this manually. The reason why I prefer to do it manually is because number one, I can control it a little bit better because you can't do them both. You can't click automatic and then use the manual to like perfect it. So I usually just use the manual. So here's what it would be if you were to do this automatically. You click preview and this looks good. However, if you see you want to get really nitpicky with a print and cut, especially if you are gonna create a print and cut background that is not white already. You don't want these little pieces to still be white. So up here in the needle, you can see that's white. Around this um, scissor, it's white. So what I would do is click revert and go to select and erase and do this manually. So all I'm doing is clicking, selecting and erasing and if you want this bigger, you can go in with that little tool there, make it bigger. And now you can really get in here. You can go in between your letters. You need to do that for sure. Just like this. On your scissors. And if you make a mistake, just go up and click your little undo button. I'm going to go in further because I want to get this piece on my scissors here. Perfect. Now I can minimize the screen and it lo this looks great. I've got in between my needles, in between all the little nooks and crannies of my scissors. It looks fantastic. So that is how you would remove the background of a PNG. And then you would go and click print the cut and do it the exact same way. Now that again is just used if your print and cut has a white background. I hope you all enjoyed this really fun, super simple video all about Cricut Design Space and uploading images. I hope these tips and tricks did help you. If you would like to learn more, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you click the bell to get notified for all the amazing videos that we have coming out. Don't forget to click that thumbs up button. We love getting likes around here. It's a great way to support what we do. But the best way to support what we do is becoming a member of the flock. Click that link down below, see what you're missing. We would love to welcome you as a flock member. It is a, an amazing community. You guys really don't know what you're missing. Thank you all so much and I will see you in another video.